Now, why do you think that the Spanish Empire lasted for so long? Uh, somebody in the Netherlands or in uh, Naples would think of the King of Spain as their king. And there is an intense and intrinsic loyalty. Uh, but there again, uh, that too is divided into kingdoms and traditional kingdoms like uh, Mexico and Peru, uh, which began to develop their own sense of identity and which had a new class of settlers who um, again felt a sense of loyalty to their monarch. So that's one possible explanation. Uh, but beyond that, obviously, uh, the King of Spain in the 16th and early 17th centuries was the most powerful monarch in the Western world. I think that uh, Spain is extraordinarily successful in establishing from very early on uh, a bureaucratic system of government, uh, a relatively efficient bureaucracy by the standards of the 16th and 17th centuries. And so one has to think of this as an empire which is partly based on pressure and power and partly on negotiation uh, between the monarch and the ruling classes in each of these territories. How important do you think that the cultural and, and uh, religi religious uh, elements were also the, the Franciscan uh, and Jesuit uh, um, activities in, in, in South America or in, in Central and North America? Yes, I mean, I think they were absolutely fundamental. So that from the beginning, this is a church-state enterprise. The missionaries, the Franciscans, Dominicans, and later the Jesuits, uh, are accompanied and succeeded and uh, preceded and uh, accompanied and sometimes su supplanted by the established church, uh, which again uh, imposes itself on the new world. There's an enormous process of church building from the beginning, building of convents and so on. I mean, if you go to Mexico today, you'll see convents all around central Mexico, many of them constructed in the 16th century, uh, with uh, some of the humanist images uh, of that period. Uh, Erasmus's influence in the 1520s and 30s in Spain was still very strong, and indeed, uh, the first bishop, uh, a bishop of Mexico, Vasco de Quiroga, uh, who'd read uh, Thomas More's Utopia. But it, the result is the creation of a society in, in which the Indians, and I'm sure we'll be talking about this, have a particular place and are accepted as possessing a place. Can you imagine some sort of uh, influence that remains there? And even if you look at those names of towns, Los Angeles, Santa Fe, uh, the name of Texas, Texas, uh, these Spanish names survive, uh, Spanish families to some extent survive, uh, and also there are influences, as I understand, in the law of certain states, in family law, uh, in the question of water rights, for, in for instance, uh, these, there are Spanish survivals, uh, similarly in New Orleans, which is as much a Spanish in some ways city as, as a French as city. French. Hmm. I think the natural, men, natural aptitude of the, of the Spaniards was to live in cities. And so uh, Cortes, from the beginning, was founding cities, and cities spread right across the Spanish New World. Uh, everywhere the Spaniards went, they founded cities and congregated in cities. And that also uh, was a form of rational planning, which was taken up particularly by Philip II, who was very anxious to get firm control over his empire of the Indies, and made a lot of ordinances in 1573, uh, saying exactly how cities should be laid out with the central plaza, uh, the governor's palace, the, the cathedral or church, and, and so on. And, um, absolutely rational system, a sort of checkerboard or gridiron system of, mm -hmm. uh, of urban planning. So that there's uh, a, an intrinsic desire, obviously, to exploit the wonderful new resource in this world and its uh, ma massive populations in Mexico and Peru. But at the same time, uh, the government is determined uh, to keep a control over what's happening, uh, to prevent what might be called unilateral declarations of independence 
by the first settlers and their families. And the crown succeeds. I and mean, for three centuries, as we've said, uh, you know, the Spanish Empire of the Indies survives. And this is a, a remarkable feat in itself, without, on the whole, major upheav upheavals and rebellions until the later 18th century. They created, over the course of two to three centuries, uh, a new form of society, a new form of civilization, uh, heavily religious, as we've said, uh, in which the indigenous population uh, assimilated at least certain aspects of Christianity and created uh, a, a, a dynamic Christianity of their own. Uh, at the same time, uh, one of the things that the Spaniards did, and the British, I think, signally failed to do in North America, was to uh, attempt to incorporate the indigenous peoples they'd conquered uh, into an organic society. And the Spanish crown in particular uh, had this obligation both to evangelize and protect the Indians. And there's a constant commitment by the crown over these three centuries to protect the Indians from exploitation by the settlers and so on, and to assimilate and incorporate them uh, into the societies that were being created. And although the protection didn't by any means always succeed, it did allow those Indians uh, to, in many ways, continue their own forms of life. They were known as the Republic of the Indians. <laughs>